Hi, my name's Adam. I'm at Southern Cross Station in Melbourne and today we're travelling by train to Ararat in southwestern Victoria. We'll be travelling on a Velocity diesel multiple unit, so come along and find out what the journey is like. In this video, we'll explore the train, learn about some of the quirks of the route and see the stunning scenery. We'll begin the journey at Melbourne Southern Cross. The trip to Ararat will take about two and a half hours, covering a distance of 206 kilometres. First, we'll head to the city of Ballarat in Victoria's central highlands, before heading further northwest towards the Grampians. Today's service departs from platform 15B, which is one of the through lines at Southern Cross. Most of the regional platforms are on terminating lines. The Velocity was first introduced in 2005. There's now more than 90 sets in service, with more in production. Most units run on broad gauge, but there's a handful of standard gauge sets which run to Albury. Today's service is formed of two three-car sets, but only the front set will go all the way to Ararat. Velocities make up the majority of the V-Line fleet. The train operating today's service is relatively new, entering service in October 2020. The conductor releases the doors to commence boarding about five minutes before departure. There are luggage stacks next to the doors. Seating is in a 2x2 two two all economy layout and is fixed, so cannot be rotated to face the direction of travel. There are no seat reservations, so it's first in, best dressed. This one will do. The rear three carriages will get detached at battle rack. There's space for smaller bags overhead. This three car set seats 222 passengers and has tray tables at most seats. There are retractable armrests. There's no catering or kiosks on broad gauge velocities, so I've brought my own. The seat width is equivalent to first class seating on V-Line locomotive hauled services. Okay, good morning passengers, this is your service to to Ararat, it's quite far at Ararat. We're stopping all stations after Adia. Adia is your first stop of Warrantland and we're calling all stations through to Ararat. That's Deepak, Caroline Springs. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Rockbatch, Copperland, King Mountain. Beckis Marsh, Milan, Ballarat, then it's Midbury, yes. Northport and Ararat. Cool. Those going through to Ararat, you must be in the front three cars of this six car service. This train gets separated at Ballarat. Anyone going through to Ballarat, you you can stay in the rear three cars. It's the ones going through after Ballarat, you must be in the front three carriages, that's the Wendry, Burford and Ararat. The seats don't recline. We'll make a brief stop at Footscray to pick up passengers. Let's take a closer look at our route. We'll head through Melbourne's outer western suburbs before climbing the central highlands on our way to Ballarat. From there, it's a relatively straight route northwest to our destination. The Ballarat line is the second busiest on the V-Line network after Geelong, averaging four to five million passengers a year before the pandemic. A considerable number of these passengers use the stations between Melbourne and Melton. It's a lot cheaper to live out here. The population has grown so much in this area that the state government is planning to electrify the line 
as far as Melton, so that suburban trains can serve these stations. The introduction of modern velocity trains combined with decreased travel times and increased frequency have been credited with helping to create a new commuter belt outside of Melbourne. Melton is now considered a suburb of Melbourne. A lot of passengers get off here. Melton is the busiest station on the line. There were 326,000 passengers in 2020-21. You can use a Victorian public transport smart card called a Mikey to travel to regional Victoria but only as far as Wendaree, a suburb of Ballarat. To travel any further, you'll need a paper ticket. The railway station opened here in 1887. Bacchus Marsh is the halfway point between Melbourne and Ballarat. From here, we'll start a significant climb, which will navigate in part with this horseshoe curve. Ballarat and Melbourne were first connected by rail in 1862, but that was an indirect route via Geelong. The line we're on didn't open until 1889, in part due to the difficult terrain between Bacchus Marsh and Balan. Marsh and the railway line we climbed is somewhere over there. It's great to have tray tables at most seats but there aren't as many seats with tray tables in older velocity sets. We reach the train's top speed on approach to Balan. The velocity is the highest speed train in the V-Line fleet. Service back up into Balan, Balan Station, this stop, thank you. In peak hour, trains operate as frequently as every 20 minutes from this station and take just over an hour to reach central Melbourne. That's quicker than driving. There was a beautiful sunset near here on my return journey. 
Here's a sneak preview. Since Melton, most of the route has been single line, but there are quite a few passing loops, like this one. We're now in the suburbs of Ballarat. separated, the front three carriages go through to Ararat, not stopping at Wendery, Burford, Ararat. The rear three carriages will stay at Ararat. Anyone from the rear three carriages and going through to Wendery onwards, please make your way to the front three carriages at Ararat main station by stepping out on the platform and then moving forward, getting the front three cars. Ararat station, this call, thank you. Ballarat is the third largest city in Victoria after Melbourne and Geelong. Ballarat Railway Station opened in 1862 and most of its original 19th century features are intact. Apologies about the glare. Gold was discovered here in 1851, sparking the gold rush. We're scheduled to stop here for a few minutes, allowing time to detach the rear three cars. This ornate heritage listed hotel dates from 1909. After a few minutes traversing the suburbs of Ballarat, we pull into Wendoree. This is as far as you can travel on a Mikey card. All passengers staying on the train now need a paper ticket. A second platform was built here and the station upgraded in 2019 to allow for extra services. Time for a wander. There's drinking fountains in the front and rear cars. There's two onboard toilets. This is the non-accessible one. It's pretty basic, but has everything you need and was clean and in working order. This area is for bikes, prams, surfboards or luggage. A three car velocity can accommodate up to six bikes. The rear car is a quiet carriage. Of course, diesel multiple units are never that quiet. There's no Wi-Fi or USB charging points, although there are a few power points intended for the cleaners. This is the accessible toilet. There's space for four wheelchair users here and another two in the rear car. And now 
we're back in the front car. I've decided to swap sides to avoid the sun. We parallel the Western Highway, which links Adelaide and Melbourne. The line between Ballarat and Ararat is relatively flat, with only one intermediate stop, so you may presume we're doing top speed. But the velocity is limited to 130 km per hour on this section. Velocities are only permitted to run at their top speed of 160 km an hour, where all level crossings are protected by boom gates and lights. It's hard to justify the cost of installing so many upgraded level crossings on long stretches of line like this, where there are lots of dirt roads and only a few train services a day. Regardless, this is a decent speed and faster than the traffic on the Western Highway. Trains between Ballarat and Ararat were withdrawn in 1994 when the Adelaide to Melbourne Railway was converted from broad gauge to standard gauge, but via a different route between Ararat and Melbourne. That route avoided the steep grades via Ballarat. The section of line between Ballarat and Ararat didn't reopen until 2004. Our average speed for the total journey between Melbourne and Ararat is about 85 kilometres per hour. Beaufort is halfway between Ballarat and Ararat. The station opened in 1874. This is the least used station on the line, with 5,000 passengers in 2020-21, although numbers were almost double that before the pandemic. Australia once had something like 700 railway hotels, but only about 100 are still open and trading under that name. The all-metal construction and metallised window tinting of the Velocity blocks all forms of radio communication in and out of the carriages, including mobile phone signals. To overcome this, the Velocity has been fitted with specially designed mobile phone repeater units. Let's look at fares. A return ticket between Southern Cross and Ararat is $62. It's half that for concession holders. We're now on the outskirts of Ararat. So what did I make of this journey? Not everyone likes the velocity, but I found the seat reasonably comfortable for a journey of this length. For obvious reasons, these units are louder than loco hauled sets, but I didn't find it too distracting. Noise cancelling headphones can also help. I really appreciate the speed these modern units can reach. It would be great if USB charging points were provided. For a comparison with a loco hauled set, check out my Warrnambool review. We can now see the standard gauge line, which heads to Melbourne via the longer but flatter route via North Geelong. Yeah, 
just in a few moments, the service will be coming into power rack. Power rack station is where the strike will terminate. Passengers moving on to Stold and Holster portion. Your buses are in front of the station. If you walk out the station, right in front is your bus connection going through to Stroll and Horsham. Just before you do leave passengers, please make sure you take all personal belongings with you. Last and final stop will be at a wrap. All change, please. And here we cross the standard gauge line. And this is as far as our train can go, being the end of the broad gauge line. This was once a busy freight yard, but these days it's pretty quiet. The discovery of gold here in 1857 transformed Ararat into a boom town and it continued to prosper until the turn of the 20th century, after which the population steadily declined. Ararat Station opened in 1875. Quite a lot of passengers transfer to the coach for Stahl, Horsham and Dimbola. This is the standard gauge line linking Adelaide and Melbourne. A lot of freight trains pass through Ararat. Other than train spotting, the top rated thing to do in Ararat is visit J Ward, which was an asylum for people who were deemed criminally insane. The broad gauge velocities use a bay platform on the southern side of the station. Ararat is served by five return velocity services via Ballarat on weekdays and three on weekends. But there's another way to get to Ararat by train the twice weekly Overland. In my next video, I'm taking the Overland from Melbourne to Adelaide in red premium class. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. See you soon.